Yes, indeed, folks. You're listening to Blue Please right here on CynicalBread.com with myself, Total Biscuit. I tell more enthusiastic. Why? It's because I'm going to talk about a better game. There you go. So. Oh, man. Getting back into DDO recently just reminded me why exactly I like the way DDO works. There are so, so many lessons that WoW could learn from DDO. They really, really are. Turbine's always been pretty good with MMOs. I mean, they made Asheron's Call, which is widely regarded as one of the best early MMOs. They then made Lord of the Rings Online, which is pretty good. It's not my thing, because it's a little bit too much like WoW. Just a bit too much in terms of the mechanics and things like that. There are certainly some things that are different, but it's, it's a bit too much WoW. Like, whereas DDO is just like, you know, actually, we don't care. <laughs> we, 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 just, we just don't give a damn. Don't. Give a damn. We're just going to do whatever we feel like. What you going to do about it? Absolutely goddamn nothing. You'll play our game and you'll like it. You'll play the game we, the way we want you to play the game and you will damn well like it. Oh, yes. Hmm. And I actually love that attitude. I really, really do. It's like, we're Turbine. We know better than you. Yeah, you're right, actually. You do. Hold on. There you go. So, there are a few things about DDO that I really like. And for some inexplicable reason, they're not putting them in WoW. And then there are some things which actually they probably could never put in WoW, because that's just not the way the game works. So, the thing about DDO, the weird thing about DDO, is that the same thing that really attracts me to DDO... One of them, anyway. One of the things that really attracts me to DDO is very, very similar, very similar, to one of the things that was pointed out in early reviews of World of Warcraft. And that's the idea of the self-contained adventure in the form of the quest. So, the quest breaks down into a very, very simple little framework. And this applies to World of Warcraft, DDO, and all of the games that work this way. A quest must have a quest giver. This quest giver will have a reason for you to take the quest. Going up to this guy and talking to him will have him ask you, I have this problem. And of course it will be always a problem of some description. Maybe big or small. It's always a problem. What is this problem, you say? That he will tell you what the problem is. He will then give you an objective. That objective will always send you somewhere. Once you go to that place, you will carry out the objective. Once the objective is complete, revisiting that quest giver will earn you a reward in the form of experience. Usually it will give you gold as well. And it, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, will give you a piece of loot. This is the basic framework that questing requires of you. Really as simple as that. So, what else is needed? What else? Well, nothing. Except the idea of the actual content being interesting. And that's really a big deal, isn't it? Now, WoW has done that successfully with the leveling content within World of Warcraft Cataclysm. In fact, I think that's probably one of Cataclysm's proudest achievements. They have improved the leveling content drastically. It is much better. It's still not where I'd like it to be, but it's much better. But I want to break it down all the way back to vanilla and talk about questing. And how DDO captures that old, old style of questing. And actually does it in a much, much better way. So, I'm going to try and find the IGN review of World of Warcraft. Because I'm pretty sure this actually had what we needed in it. This had the quote that I'm after. Almost surely. I'm going to find it. Let's see. Here we go, yes. This, I use this quote every time because it's a really good quote. 
Now imagine an MMO where your experience is a string of quests where you're rewarded with cool item recipe or a decent amount of pocket money, a game where the grind is virtually eliminated, a game where downtime is relatively non-existent, where enemies respawn rapidly and dynamically according to how many players are in the local area. Things like that. Now in this case, that quote isn't entirely irrelevant, but what I just said about questing kind of is. Now... The thing about questing is that questing is a self-contained adventure, and questing is actually what made the game initially very casual-friendly, as it were. Because you could spend ten minutes in the game, whenever, and you could accomplish something. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's actually the reason that daily quests continue to exist. Because as laborious and dull as hell as they are, a casual player... And we're talking about the most casual of casual right here. I mean, we really, really are. We're talking about some guy that can maybe log in randomly for like 10 minutes. Which, I don't know, how large... How large is the player base that can only do that? I don't know. I have no idea. There's no way to tell, is there? None. We'd have no metrics on this. So, questing helps those kind of people, but... And the thing about DDO is that it takes the concept of a self-contained adventure and it goes nuts with it. It's like, well, so WoW has self-contained adventures in the form of quests. You can do a quest and you've just gone on a mini-adventure and you get rewarded for it. And it, it ties it up nicely. You know? I think that's kind of the main thing, isn't it? It gives you closure. Closure is... Da -da! That's the sound of closure within World of Warcraft, folks. When you complete a quest, when you hand it in, a little noise, and the little reward, and the clinking of gold, and the acquisition of an item. That's ultimate closure right there. You started your adventure, you finished your adventure, you achieved something, and that, as they say, is that. And of course, that only really matters to the most casual of people, but I think the cool thing about DDO is that it does the same thing, but it appeals to a slightly more hardcore crowd. Yeah? Because... Everything in DDO is also, for the most part, I think there are some exceptions, like dungeons within dungeons, they do actually exist, but for the vast majority of quests, what you get is a self-contained adventure. It's more to the point, it's a handcrafted self-contained adventure. And in that case, it goes back to the same way that questing works within WoW. There is a quest giver, he has a problem. You talk to the quest giver, you go to a certain location, except in DDO, Vast majority of the time, there are some exceptions, but the vast majority of the time, you enter a door, or some kind of gate or portal or manhole that has a little orange swirly thing on it. A little squiggle, swirly thing. Kind of looks like a Dreamcast logo. So you go into Dreamcast Dungeon, and Dreamcast Dungeon will then display a menu, and it will say, This is the level of this adventure. This is what you will expect here. This might be a challenging adventure, which requires you to do a party. That's actually something that I found rather amusing. A few days ago, I decided I'm going to go to the Necropolis and try and record an adventure for you guys and show it to you. And then I realized the dungeon I'd gone into was actually impossible to do without a party. And you might think, oh, well, you're just not good enough. No, it was literally impossible to do. There were switches that people had to throw at the same time. Your party actually had to split up, throw those switches at the same time, and it was impossible to solo. You could not do it. You couldn't even do it with hirelings, as far as I'm aware. You had to have other people with it. And the majority of quests in DDO are not like that, but there are some in there, certainly. The, the weird thing about DDO, I suppose, is the fact that dungeons, in the way that you would expect them to be in WoW, and questings, they, the lines blur between them, to the point where actually there really isn't a difference between them. Because all of this questing is done in an instance, everything is a dungeon. I forgot to say, it's Dungeons and Dragons, why would it not? Why would it not be? So in this case, you can do the dungeon solo, or you can do them as a group. And, by default, there are four difficulty levels available for pretty much every quest. Again, some exceptions, but for most of them. And for some of them, there's also a fifth, which is basically heroic. Yeah? At maximum level, you can do that dungeon again on epic difficulty, which is the same as heroic. You have to be level 20 to do it, and of course it yields all manner of rewards. And it's really hard! Incredibly difficult. There are still plenty of dungeons at that level. You can go in there to acquire gear and all sorts of things. Guild Renown, for instance. I mean, guilds in DDR, I think, have like 100 levels. It takes much longer to get through that. Oh, yeah, and guild airships. Yes. 
something I was hoping from WoW. It's like, why can we not have a guild something? No, you're not allowed that. Well, that sucks. Oh, well. Anyway, back to the point, I suppose. The idea of the self-contained adventure. It's self-contained in the fact that it is scripted. It's got voice acting in it pretty much all the time. Not all of it, but most of it. In the form of the dungeon master that says, well, this is why you're here. And then advances the storyline along. And it seems cheesy, but it helps. It really, really does. It brings the immersion factor to the fore on that one. And it, once again, gives you the impression that you are in a self-contained adventure. Because that's exactly what it is. A dungeon within DDO is basically an adventure that you would have in a tabletop. But it's much shorter most of the time. Obviously, doing the kind of things that you did in DDO in the tabletop and pen and paper versions of Dungeons and Dragons would take hours. In Dungeons and Dragons Online, you can do it in about 10-15 minutes, maybe, because, of course, it's all self-contained and, more to the point, it's in real time. There are longer dungeons and quests, certainly. But you get the point. So what happens? Well, because you are able to do that, and because you then get a satisfying conclusion, usually you get treasure chests at the end of it. And because they don't really do random loot drops in the same way as WoW, it feels more exciting. It's the same thing, but it's delivered in a different way. And actually, that delivery is what makes all the difference. For instance, you can get random green drops in dungeons, and of course, you can get random blues and things like that, and you get boss drops. But DDO doesn't really do it that way. DDO does it all from chests. And chests appear when you complete certain objectives, and usually when you beat the dungeon. You don't get random drops in the same way. Sure, some monsters do drop little collectible bags, and usually they've got collectibles which can be handed into various vendors in order to gain rewards. But most of the time, the loot that you get is from chests. And even the experience you get from dungeons and quests in DDO is actually the end of the quest. Because you don't earn experience in the same way. And you don't earn loot the same way. And I think that because of that, it gives a massive advantage to DDO in terms of that sense of closure. Going back to that old idea of what questing was in WoW. The old vanilla idea of a self-contained adventure. The loot and the experience that you all get in one go at the end of a quest. You get no experience from killing monsters, folks. You don't. You get no experience from doing that whatsoever. None. None at all. You get it all at the end. And it's all calculated by a scorecard. And you can see where it came from. And you get more experience if you do the dungeon in a better way. And even you get all your loot at the end. And you loot the chest. And your whole party's like, Ooh, what's in the chest? What am I going to get? And of course, everybody gets loot. You don't have to roll against other people. Everyone gets their own set of loot from that. It's like, yeah, this is, this is great. That was the end of our adventure. That was the really cool thing. And once you hand it in... And even, actually, once you've done the quest and once you go to do the hand-in, you then get randomly generated loot at the end. I suppose it's kind of... I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Because I think I could see both sides of the argument. When you're doing a quest and you know that there's going to be a good item at the end that you need, I suppose you feel more motivated to do it. But I think the exciting thing about questing in DDO is that more often than not, the quest giver will randomly generate some of the loot. Sure, some quests will definitely reward you with a choice of things that were there by default. Like, for instance, anyone that's played through the low levels knows about the nicked weapons. Yeah? The nicked longsword, the nicked heavy mace, the nicked short sword, and so forth. Those are there for a really good reason. Really good reason. Because, of course, they're designed to make sure that by that point you actually have a really good weapon. But the vast majority of them, they're not preset. And it'll generate like six or seven different things. Like, for instance, one I did earlier, I generated some stuff. I was like, oh, look, it just generated me a plus three heavy mace. That's actually really useful. But I could look through this stuff. Well, that's, huh. I could take the plus three heavy mace, or I could maybe take the plus one heavy mace of something, which has got a special ability. So maybe that might be good. I don't know. Or I can just not do that at all. I can take guild renown, which is just guild experience. I can hand it in if there's nothing else that I want there. So that's what it comes down to, folks. DDO takes the idea of WoW questing. And it takes it all the way beyond what WoW has done with it. It knows why people prefer adventures in that format, and it expands on it, and it perfects it, in my opinion. Because I don't know of a game that has questing better than DDO. As far as I'm concerned, that, that game does not exist yet. DDO has the best questing in any MMO ever. 
And it's all because of the way that it's structured and the way that the rewards are distributed and the way that everything is self-contained. In every way, even mechanically, it's self-contained. It is an instance. Everything is self-contained. And once you've done a quest, you can log off and feel completely satisfied with your play experience. My name is Total Biscuit. You are listening to Blue Please right here on CynicalBrett.com with myself, Total Biscuit. So good that I said it twice. A reminder, folks, donations for Nordrasil Radio to help them go to DreamHack. Head over to NordrasilRadio.com. There's a donate button there. They're currently, I believe, out of 75 euros out of the 600 they need. So thanks for your generosity. If you've got any dollars lying around, just some spare change in PayPal, feel free to donate to Nordrasil Radio. In the meantime, I think I'm going to play you some Avantasia. Why not? It's called The Looking Glass. Enjoy. Enjoy. 